Hey family, you already know what time it is. I got a big, I got a big mug today. So, excuse me. For today's study, we're going to do the parable of a sower. And if you guys have heard this parable, it's one of the most, I believe, fundamental parable that we as Christians should understand. All right, guys, it's time to pull out your Bibles. Can you guys turn to Matthew 13. It, it kind of got chilly. All right, Matthew 13, verse 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith when they sprung up, because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth good fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And so we see when Jesus is speaking this parable, there are three instances of where there are bad seeds being brought forth. Um, but there's only one way where you become a good seed or bring forth, uh, bring forth, I'm sorry, uh, good fruit. Doesn't it remind you of all the kinds of ways Satan uses to distract us, um, different religions, um, different um, ways of life? Um, there are so many paths and there's they all lead to destruction. But Jesus Christ, there's only one way. And it's always been one way. There can only be one way that you can, a good seed can bring forth fruit. There's only one way. There's not multiple, there's only one. And you can also find this parable in Mark 4. Um, it's very interesting if you go back and read in between both of Matthew and Mark. They both give the same account of the same parable, but they both have a different kind of understanding and also verbiage. And kind of gives the full picture. Um, this is going to be a two-part series um, just because it's just not enough time to put the interpretation that um, Jesus gives later on in the sermon. Um, but if you guys can, I want you guys to think about this real quick. Um, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says, and he said unto them, know ye not this parable? How then will you know any of the other parables I speak? So this parable is very important for us to understand and stick around for the next part. God bless you. All right, guys, I'm back for a part two of the series of the Parable of the Sower. And if you haven't watched part one, um, please go back because this video might be confusing. In part one, um, I read the Parable of the Sower, um, but now I'm gonna have this part where I read the interpretation. And if you guys wanna turn your Bibles to chapter 13 of Matthew. Matthew 13, verse... I'm blanking. Get it together. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Matthew 13, verse um, 18. So again, in the beginning of this chapter, um, the parable has been already said, but now further down, he's doing the interpretation. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth the way which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that receives seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and immediately with joy receives it. Yet he has no root in himself, endureth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. He who receives seed into good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth some 100, some 60, some 30 fold. Again, we see that Jesus is speaking about the instances um, of the seeds in the parable, the seeds that fell off by the wayside, the seeds that fell into stony places, the seeds also that are choked by thorns. And now you see that he has given an interpretation of exactly what those mean. And if you guys notice, the seeds that are being sown is the word of God. And the ones that have received seed by the wayside are those that hear the word, but do not understand it. And so now it's easy for Satan to come and take 
that understanding away or that little that they had. And when I think about people like this, I think about people who have been brought up into Christianity without really understanding it. So they go into the cares of the world and they kind of just forget or they just renounce Christianity. A lot of people get hurt by the word, um, unfortunately, just because of people, not because of God. People have been forced by people using the Bible as a tool for their own agendas. And unfortunately, people become victims of that. And it's very sad to see. Stick around for part three. Welcome to part three. Welcome to part three. Welcome to part three. <laughs> so now we've read the parable of the sower and now we have its interpretation. Um, in my previous video, I mentioned about seeds that have fallen by the wayside. Um, it reminds me of people who have heard the word, who were even brought up with the word, but unfortunately they don't have an understanding of it. And they get fooled by people using the Bible as a tool, as a weapon against them. And it's very sad to see. And when they automatically blame God for, you know, people, and we, we all know people are inherently evil. It comes from a place of selfishness. People want what they want. People are greedy. Um, people will hurt other people to get what they want. And that's not God at all. And he always preaches against that. And unfortunately, people have been hurt by people who call themselves Christians and unfortunately use the Bible for their own agendas. And so the next seed would be the seeds that fall into stony places. And those are people who hear the word and immediately they're drawn to it. Immediately they receive it with gladness and with joy. However, they don't have a solid um, understanding or foundation um, of the word. And so when persecution arises because of the word, they get offended by it because they think it's all supposed to be good things, you know? And that's another lie. Um, I don't know where that started from, honestly. I don't know. When you follow Christ, you live a persecuted life. Um, bad things happen, you know? Um, this is a great analogy of how I used to think about it, or my dad used to say. You are a light upon a hill, and moths are attracted to light, you know? Bad things. Bad things are kind of like attracted to light, you know? Um, when you're a light of this world, sometimes the worst things happen to you. So when persecution arises because of the word of God, because that's what it says, we are a persecuted faith, um, they get offended. And those are the seeds in the stony places. They don't have a foundation. They don't have a complete understanding of exactly what the faith is. So when bad things happen, you know, they blame God. Who else can you blame, right? Don't you dare blame people because it isn't like we're responsible for almost all of our actions, right? Stick around for part four. All right, you made it to part four. Congrats. Well, this is gonna be the last part of this series. Um, I enjoy reading this parable a lot. Um, it just kind of puts into perspective of people, you know, the different kinds of people. So we have one more seed that is kind of like a bad seed um, is the seeds that get choked by thorns and the one that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word and they become unfruitful so these are people that hear the word and things like money um, deceit they come in and they distract us from God they take our focus away and without God we have nothing, you know. We, we usually think because we live in such a modern society that, you know, we pray for God. We, we first do what we need to do. And what that usually is, is, I don't know, get a job, um, get a career. Um, and then through that, those things, we ask God for help instead of going to him directly and having us lead us where he needs to be, where we need to be. Usually we do the things first and then ask God. That's not how it works. That's how we become choked by thorns. That's how the world gets us, is that we play the world's games first. We play by their rules first. And then... I heard a dog cry. We play by the, by the world's rules. We do what we need to do in the world for the cares of the world. And then we ask God for help. No, seek God first. And then he leads us to where he needs us to be. 
and you know when I first kind of understood that that wasn't that long ago honestly it was probably like a week or so ago when I finally grasped that and I was like that's what that it's so easy to fall into the worms the worms and weeds are such a common thing when it comes to growing actual plants and so is it and spiritually spiritually also it's very easy to fall into the cares of this world and the last one the good seed the only good way the only way it's very simple to become a good seed when you hear the word to understand it and when you understand it you begin to bear fruit understanding the word man is critical it's the only way to become a good seed he who has an ear let him hear